Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 34. So this tutorial we're going to carry on where we left off last time and we're going to create a kind of a minor jump scare. And what I mean by a minor jump scare is we're going to have something come flying off this table whenever we're near it. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the idea of what we're going to do is we are going to create, um, let's say, one of the objects we already have from an asset pack fly off this table whenever we walk um, near it, let's say through the door just here. And the way we're going to do that is a little bit of physics and a trigger as well to get it working. So first things first, let's set everything up. Let's have a cube which is going to represent the object which goes flying. And obviously we can put the object inside that cube later on we just need to have some pieces in place first so game object 3d object and cube and let's place it somewhere on this table probably reduce the size just a little bit it is too big that probably should do the trick so let's have it roughly there on the table next what we need to do is add a rigid body so let's add component and type in rigid body and there it is Next thing we need to do is add in, um, let's say a sphere, for example. So that's going to be the object which triggers the movement. So game object, 3D object and uh, sphere. And let's place that somewhere here, but make sure it does kind of intersect very slightly with the object. So we can see here that the sphere is kind of inside the cube. That is what we need. So let's have that round about there. We also need to attach a rigid body to the sphere as well and turn that sphere off. So I'm going to rename both of these. Uh, let's rename the cube and call this, I'm just going to call it flying object because it's going to go kind of tumbling a little bit, flying across the room. And this one will be um, jump activator. So I'm going to demonstrate how this is going to work. Um, quite simply without code now. So if I press play and I'm going to head back to the scene view so we can actually see it so we don't need to play through. Um, what is going to happen here is when we activate this jump activator you can see that that goes flying across the room. So on the same premise what we need to do is turn off the mesh renderer of that sphere. So if we press play again and let's head to the scene view and have a quick look. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So that sphere is no longer visible when we activate it. So what will happen is when we come in, that will all of a sudden just do that across the room. And we won't see this at all. We'll just see that come flying across. So now let's put an object inside this cube itself, just so as something actually happens. Um, not sure what we can put. Let's have a quick look at what assets we have. Uh, I know we've downloaded quite a few different ones and I guess at the end of the day it's entirely up to you what asset you want to put in there. Um, let's put this little clip in there. So I'm going to put this inside there and probably align it a little bit more. There we go. And now turn off the mesh renderer. So now what should happen is this little mug or cup or whatever you want to call it is going to go flying across. So we can't see that cube anymore. So that's going to go whoosh across there. So how do we get all of this working as we want it to? Well, we've done it many times before. Let's create a trigger when we come through this door. So right here in the doorway, we're going to have that trigger. So game object, 3D object and cube. And let's place this, make sure we can actually trigger it. So somewhere around about there. It doesn't need to be perfect as always. Uh, untick mesh renderer and tick is trigger on the box collider. Obviously they are important. And let's rename this and let's call it minor jump trig. So now let's create the script which is going to be attached to this trigger. So let's do this in environment and let's right click create C sharp script. And again, we'll just call it minor jump. And obviously you can create many different variations of this. It doesn't always have to be in the same setup that we have here. You know, use your initiative a little 
and see what kind of things you can come up with because when this is done this is going to be kind of cool and you can modify it in different ways and come up with different effects so yes we have the trigger there so all we need to do is we need to declare a couple of things we need to get rid of void start void update because we do not need them and let's have a couple of it let's let's have let's have the cup one first so public game object and cup object next public game object and let's have the um, i'll just call it sphere trig and realistically that's all we actually need because we're going to be doing this in void on trigger enter and those are the only two objects that are ever going to be used within this particular sequence so on trigger enter doesn't need to be private so we can get rid of that so what do we want to happen when we trigger this object all we need to happen is the in fact you know what now i think about it i don't even think we need that cup object unless you want to i don't know make it disappear or something maybe we could do that so let's keep it there just in case so all we really need to happen is the sphere trigger needs to activate as soon as we enter this uh, particular trigger so sphere trig dot set active true semicolon now that sphere will also stay in the scene. So what we kind of need to do is after a split second, let's say half a second, we need to deactivate it. Reason being is because it's still going to be in the scene. It's probably going to roll around a little bit, get in the way. And even though we can't see it, it's probably best to um, deactivate it as soon as we've triggered all of this. So to do that, let's start a coroutine. So I enumerator, and let's call it deactive eight sphere if i can spell open close bracket open curly bracket and then we need to yield return new wait for seconds and we'll wait for half a second so 0 0.5 f because it is a float semicolon and sphere trig dot set active false semicolon now, at the same time, we need to not be able to trigger this uh, trigger. I keep saying trigger because you know, we have two triggers here, technically. <laughs> we only want to be able to do this once. So what we'll do is as soon as we activate this, we will say this dot game object dot get component and in spiky brackets box collider. Up close bracket dot enabled equals false and then obviously after we've set this sphere trigger on we need to then run that coroutine so as it actually turns itself off so we need to say start coroutine and in brackets deactivate sphere up close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so Let's head back into Unity. Give it a moment to think there. And we need to attach that script to our minor jump trigger. So drag and drop onto there. And let's attach those two objects. So the flying object is going to be the cup object, even though we haven't used this just yet. And the jump activator is going to be the sphere trig. Perfect. So what we need to do now is test this out so i'm going to save my scene and now i think about it i might can turn that volume down just a little bit it was a little bit loud for me there so let's try this out so we know in this area what we need to do is pick up some ammo we need to pick up our key and then open the door so let's see if this actually works fingers crossed there we go so that only happened once and you can see in the inspector panel that jump activator now is disappeared again so it's off so that has only happened once we cannot trigger that again we can look at it it's very nice but we can only do it once so like i said earlier what if we want to i don't know make it disappear or something well what we need to do is 
still in this deactivate sphere. Let's make it disappear after, let's say, three seconds after we've initiated the sequence. So we've already gone half a second, so let's wait for another two and a half seconds. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, 2.5f again, because it's a float. And then we'll say cup object dot set active false semicolon and save again you only really need to do this if you want it to disappear if you don't then you don't need to do this bit so let's give this a quick test let's get the ammo pick up the key Oop, not my mouse there and through the door and there goes that and it disappears. So like I say, you only need to do that if you want it to disappear. I kind of don't. I, th I think I want it to stay in the scene itself. I think it serves its purpose well enough. So what else can we do? Well, as you saw there, the way it reacted with its physics was very slightly different uh, that time. I don't think it'll do the exact same thing multiple times and I guess you can play around with a couple of different pieces of this to see how it reacts. So for example, let's change the sphere size to be um, let's say 2 by 2 by 2 and let's place it below the object. So kind of maybe about there just out of curiosity and let's turn it off again and let's press play and just see how it reacts now so once again through here and let's see what happens well, hey so it slammed into the roof and then slammed over there so the best thing to do is work out how you want this to react. I kind of like it just tumbling right in front of me. Again, if you want something different, you do something different. It's, it's your game at the end of the day. But that's how you achieve different effects using the same technique. You can just move that around a little bit and you can kind of determine basically the whole routine of what's gonna happen. So if you've got the sphere where I've got it there, it's gonna go this way. If you had it underneath, it's going to go upwards. If you have it this side, it's going to go into the wall. So you could theoretically have this um, activator here, have it quite large, and then the cuff would slam into this wall, slam into the ceiling, and slam into the floor. So that might be something to try out and see what you can come up with. I, I love all kinds of different effects, especially when it's as easy as this. So next tutorial, what I'd like to do is I would like to add in some sound effects for that, some collision sound effects. So when it lands on the floor, it actually makes a noise. And basically we can use that uh, C sharp code. In fact, we'll create a new C sharp code for that one, I think, because we'll attach it to the object itself. But basically it'll only make a noise when it collides with, for example, a floor, the wall, wherever. And I also want to bring in the next part of our game, which is going to be um, like an eye puzzle. So we'll have one half of an eye that we'll bring in next tutorial as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.